Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I was due in Nashville, Tennessee, and today on the Working Draft server, I've got something just kind of thaumaturgically exciting and bizarre. I need to show my friend Doc Redstone. Now, Doc, uh, I'll sh explain more about it once we get on site, but would you like to greet the viewers? How's it going, guys? They can't answer you, but I'm sure that they will comment something like video's too short or whatever. So if you go through this nether book here, then I, I did this before we had our link modifier, so that way oh, okay. I could just teleport right to my portal, which would pop me out at my wilderness base. Technically, this is really not necessary anymore now that we have the link modifier, but hey, I like it. So you've come out. This is my wilderness, and I've got my thaumaturgical station for Thaumcraft set up over here on this aluminum platform, which is really easy to find at night, which is, you know, why I did that. But... All the surplus magic that I've been apparently wasting here has started affecting the environment and has in fact constructed... You see this little round hill back this way? This little hobbit oh, house? Yes, I that, do indeed. That wasn't there three days ago. This is new. And I didn't really know what it was at first. And then I was like, oh, it's got some sort of jungle brick and some cobblestone and iron bars... This looks like a dungeon. So It looks like a terrifying dungeon. They even gave us these iron bars saying stay out. It's just like yes. asking for trouble to go in there. So somebody knew better than to open this door. Did you bring any torches with me? Or did, with you? Um, I don't... Yes, I did. I brought 20. Okay, great. You're going to be the torch man and I'll be the swordsman. So when you come in, start lighting stuff up, and I'll start beating stuff. Whoa, that's a lot of stuff already. So, whoa, we got three angry zombies coming at me. Uh, are you being... Uh, oh, there is a spawner down there. Whoa, one oh. of them's after you. Oh. Whoa, did you fall okay. in? Yeah, I did. Okay. Skeleton spawner. Oh. There's, there's stairs. So okay. keep lighting. Oh, yeah. All right, I got the spawners. One behind here. you. Oh. I'm coming down. Okay, we might want to get some more lights around here. So this is all new, though. Um, so apparently, Thalmcraft has generated this dungeon out of... In, to correct some of the balance. It just dumped all the magical energy into matter. Let's see what's in these chests. Chest number one has two emeralds and some bronze uh, armor and three pieces of gold. Chest number two has a Thaumium sword Whoa. and bronze leggings. And chest number three has uh, some thaumium, some tin, some bone, and some more bronze. I don't suppose you need a bunch of bronze armor. Um, no, I have my fancy quantum armor. Well, would you like the thaumium sword? Um. Or wait, you, do you have not... a crazy nano sword or something? I have a crazy nano sword, so. Well, Kinda. you can have this. these bones. There were some bones in there, too, I think. Okay, awesome. I so, need bones. So, so there we go. We have evenly divided up the spoils of this trip. Um, <laughs> so this is going to be... This is an interesting structure. It's, it's neat that it'll do world gen like that after you play. Yeah, I had no idea that Thalmcraft was capable of such feats. Yeah, so I guess I probably want to bar this back up. Just in case, uh, just in case something, I don't want water to go down in there, wipe out all the torches, and then all the mobs just flush me out. Yeah. Flush out at me. <laughs> oh. But yeah, this is definitely a neat little addition to my game. So thank you to the developer of Thaumcraft for yeah. giving us this little baby adventure. I didn't know if this was going to be like a 25 hour quest where we have to, I don't know, stop other gardens from getting destroyed or something. Whatever. We're seed agents now. Final Fantasy VIII references. You're done. Anyway, so, Doc, uh, any final words? We gotta probably um, get back to the portal before dark. Yes. No, I have no final words. Awesome. Well, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring. And don't forget to leave a comment to answer Doc's question of how are you today, and to suggest some final words for him, because clearly he needs them. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So anyway, if you want to poke around here at all and check out some of this stuff, you can. Yeah. 
that might be interesting to your viewers, because my viewers have seen all the Thomcraft stuff, if you just want me to explain stuff. Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and this right here is Doc Redstone, and he's standing adjacent to our research table. You guys have seen the research table plenty in my latest videos, so you all know how it works. And so in this video, we get to pretend we're watching Blue's Clues, and you all can yell at him like, A clue, a clue, Doc Redstone, you're doing it wrong. Instead of yelling at me, I'm doing it wrong. Because, of course, I know everything perfectly. So, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's see, how far along is the research? Arcane Bellows. Okay, so now that we know it's a bellows... You would think, okay, bellows would normally be made out of leather. It would have air in it. It's a tool. So uh, leather or something like animal might be helpful. What is this? A balatio. Mutatio. 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 You got you to gotta have the rising inflection. Oh, it's mutatio. not actually Mutatio. Yeah, you, the, 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 the word gets louder as you say it. Mutatio. Oh, it looks like it has something around the environment promoting it. Oh, that's good. Let's see if it does anything. Oh. 81%. Oh. Uh oh, uh, wisps Bonza. are spawning. Uh oh. That one's all red. I don't know if that means angry or not. Yeah, that one doesn't look as friendly as the last. How, did you kill the last one yourself, or did you let the... I did. Yeah, I got this fancy wispy essence from it. Would you mind putting that in the table just to look at? I think I tossed it to you. Oh. Neat. Oh, it's got yeah. some sort of crazy thing. Yeah, mutatio. Okay, so now we've gotten 50%, so it's at least telling us... If you mouse over the thing, experimentation has led you to discover some interesting facts about the elements of air and how to harness it. You might be able to craft a bellows that can work by itself. Well, working by itself is, I think, um, a, a trait that is common with, like, the lever. I have a couple buttons here. I, I, I thought I had, like, a stack of, like, 17 levers. Oh, here it is. Oh, the machinima. Yeah, so let me throw in... So, yeah, levers and machinima. Okay, so definitely the lever, Imperio, can adventure map. Oh, it was modus. It, it was modus. It was. Awesome. I put, I put in some transposers that also have it. I assume pistons have it as well, but... Okay, um... How, how expensive are transposers? Go ahead and use them. I'm not hurting on any resources, so... Ah, uh, we're 7% down. Oh... Let me, uh, I've got a rubber log at my base that has, has that property. Okay. Um, and I think, oh, Quicksilver has that property. Oh, nice. Let me, this let is, me see if I got some Quicksilver. This is extremely, like, addictive. It's like gambling. It's like, just put one more in. It'll no, work. no, no, it is gambling. <laughs> it, this is the gambling mod for Minecraft. <laughs> it's like, just one more, just one more. I know it'll work. How did I? How did I not? I can't find my quicksilver. Maybe I burned it on some other project or something. Oh, man. Okay, here we go. Well, let's use the rubber tree log first. Nope, didn't work. Great. So oh. now you see it's an arcana bellows. All right. And what that's gonna tell me? Oh, I forgot my thumbonomicon. Sorry, I need to teleport away again to pick it up. I had dropped it off before we started doing our dungeon adventure. Oh, okay. Uh, just because you don't want to lose your book of all your research on your dungeon adventure. Okay. That sounds... So, when I read this, what it'll do is it'll go into my Thalmanomicon. Okay. And it will show me how to make one. Um, which, unfortunately, I can't show you... You wouldn't have been able to even read that scroll, I don't think, because your uh, the tech tree is dependent on accomplishing things in a certain order, I think. Yeah, the only thing I have in my Thaumonomicon is Nitor. Yeah. So, Arcane Bellows. The Arcane Bellows performs much the same function as its mundane counterpart, but it pumps away by itself. Whoa. Whoa. On God. Yeah, you see what I mean about them things like, they do some damage. 
<laughs> it's cheating. You can't even hit it. It's literally shooting close. lightning at you. Oh. oh, dang it. I did have bow arrows. Ha. Oh, you got him. And there's a zombie there, too. I was going to say, if you die to the zombie in the... Uh... The nice part about my uh, quantum armor is the chest plate... Pl Ooh, excuse me. Chest uh -oh, plate makes one. me next to invincible. You just this is this is wisp fighting with Doc Redstone while Joe <laughs> reads the book aloud. So all the magic we use to do that is like making extra stuff. Okay, so attaching it to an infernal furnace has shown some interesting results. Um, elemental infused air not only stokes the flames but causes them to burn more purely, generating in a reduction of flux generated, which is like the negative energy, and increasing the odds of getting bonus nuggets um, while smelting. Um, they're, they can also be attached to normal furnaces to increase their speed. You can also attach them to crucibles to increase the or to decrease the amount of time it takes them to boil. So crucibles are these special cauldrons I have here. Okay. Um. So if we wanted to actually make one of this, um, now the way the infusion altar works is you have to actually lay something out in it, but then you also whoa don't stand in the boiling water. Um, you you also then have to um, infuse the cauldrons that are near it with the elements that are necessary to to infuse it properly. You may have noticed that the wisps always spawn in the same place, like in the center of my base there. Yeah. Or maybe you did not. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so the reason for that is that there's an aura node directly above this, which is why I chose it for my location, because I thought it would be good to have access to a lot of magical energy. That was a mistake. What you want to do, <laughs> you want to have your base, your, your magic stuff near an aura node, but the thing is... Um, Okay, so you draw power from it, but it's also where any wisps or malignant energy lack focuses when you overflow stuff. And so the best thing to do is to have the actual aura node outside of my base. Because right now, if I built a, 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 like a box around this, the wisps would spawn directly above my head and keep killing me. So what I want to do is probably oh. move the whole thing over and then build a box around that and then the wisps can't get in. Oh, gotcha. And can you see the aura node? Do you have those special goggles? No, I don't have anything to see them with. People in the comments have told me about them, though. The arcane bellows, um, let's go ahead and attach that over here. I'm going to shift-click it, I guess. I don't, oh, okay, I was going to say, I don't know if it's working, but yeah, it actually has a little nozzle. <laughs> it's, it's an accordion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. That's so, awesome. Now, what this does... Oh, I probably should have thrown some stuff in there to cook earlier, just as a demonstration. But uh, if I throw in these raw chickens up at the top there... Whoa, you're getting attacked. Two two of them. There's three of them. Whoa, four. And, of course, I'm out of arrows. And nearly out of jetpack. How's your armor holding up? Because I know yours is a lot fancier than mine. Uh, considering my chest plate holds ten thousand e or ten million EU, it's not draining anytime soon. Good deal. Well, I'm gonna try and back you up as best as I can, but my jetpack's running pretty low. Awesome. Are we summoning that thunderstorm? I, just... I was gonna say I think so because I just saw lightning strike and it's not storming. Wow, so apparently whatever we're doing, we're really ruining nature. Um, so anyway, though, these chicken presumably cook pretty quick, and I got a chicken nugget out of it, which is like bonus chicken. You want a chicken nugget? I would love a chicken nugget. There you go. I don't know if you can... And how do you use your furnace? I'm like right-clicking on it, and it doesn't work. No, 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 work. you is throw stuff in on the top. Do you have stuff to throw in? Uh, I have... So watch, I'm going to throw I... in this raw beef. Oh, wait, I missed it. It's kind of hard to hit the, uh... So you just drop stuff in on the, in the lava. And... I just took your raw beef. Well, don't do that. Throw it in the furnace. There we go. It picked it up. There we go. So now it'll start throwing out steak that's cooked. Oh, <laughs> it just throws it at you. It just throws it at you. <laughs> and it threw out that's some awesome. beef nuggets as well. 
And those beef nuggets are useful because they are a pure source of the um, the meat uh, essentia. So that way, if I need to cook something that has meat essentia, I won't be making magical byproducts or spilling over um, extra stuff, essentially. Oh, sweet. So, it's, I, yeah, I'm really curious um, what I can... Oh, and also these things will uh, throw out experience at you like a normal furnace. Which I don't think that the uh, mist Or not Mistcraft. I don't think the uh, IC2 furnaces give you experience. No, they do not. So, you know, if you're going to do, um, you know, enchanting and whatnot, then this works with that, too. Did you just jump in the lava? There's water I, over I, here if you need. I was... I can't catch fire. I was really tempted, though, to see what happens if it, like, toss me out the front. Uh, you're spawning more <laughs> wisps, apparently. Oh, no. Don't break the bellows. He's, like, right. right behind the bellows he's hiding. Yeah, I'm watching it. He looks like he's peaceful. But for how long? No, he looks That's fine. true. All of the light. But yeah, so the thing is that, um, anyway, so the aura point that's actually like right here or so is uh, definitely going to be problematic for me. The more magical stuff I do, the more it's going to start spilling over and the crazier it's going to get. So that's actually one reason, even though our spawn village doesn't have any uh, aura nodes and we can't do thalmcraft there, I'm kind of in favor of just leaving that at this point and saying, hey, if you want to have, like, dungeons show up, have them happen in your wilderness plot, not in the middle of our city. Yeah. Well, can... See, because I think the bad magic is because of the aura, right? Well, so does that mean that since spawn has no aura, the bad negative results can't occur? I believe possibly, but the problem is you can't recharge your wand or anything there. You can't do all the stuff that's dependent on ambient energy. Oh, okay. Because there's no ambient magic at spawn. Gotcha. So it kind of limits what you can do at spawn. Exactly. So it, it cuts both ways. And there's ways that we could mod the server to make it regenerate aura in the uh, old chunks. But at this point, I'm just kind of thinking, you know what, let's just let people do this out in the wilderness, and uh, it gives them a reason to get out more, honestly, without... Yeah. <laughs> keep spawn from getting blown up. Right. Because uh, I know eventually when you start doing some, like, really, really super, um, I don't know, like, the higher-up magic or whatever, I know, like, those wisps can spawn, like, triple to ten times the size of what we just saw. Oh, seriously? They get bigger? Yeah, I think they have huge versions of them. Oh, dude, that's frightening. Yeah, let's... Though I uh, could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I've seen them in videos. Yeah, last thing we need is them running around setting everything on fire. Yeah, <laughs> right. Because, like, I know even with mob grief and off, like, gas can still st set stuff on fire and whatnot. Um, so... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I know you had to run, but... Uh, Thank you very much, Doc. Oh, there was the end of my jetpack. Thank you very much, Doc, for coming out and joining me on this research adventure and helping with the collection of all the feathers. Did you learn anything? I learned a lot. Now I'm going to have to go, like, use this, go make myself one of these research tables and start dabbling myself. I'm going to be out of resources in no time. Oh, yeah. If you have too much stuff, start playing Thalmcraft. You'll never have that problem again. <laughs> So, oh. anyway, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring. Bye.